Okay, today we're going to look at a little bit of a differential diagnosis between one more common dysfunction in the upper thorax and something that uh, people could mistake it for instead of what the actual problem is, and that's an elevated first rib. So a lot of people treat elevated first ribs in the clinic, and not all of them are a specific subluxation of the first rib uh, in the true sense of the word. Um, there could be some other soft tissue restrictions or tone of levators, uh, not levator, but the scalenes pulling and holding up a first rib. But from what I've been seeing in the clinic, more often the case is actually dysfunction at T12 than actual first rib. So our patient here today has such a dysfunction, so I wanted to show all of you. If you were to look and just palpate along his first ribs, you could see that his left side is more elevated than his right side. And so when we side bend him to his right, the first rib on his right drops down, has a springy end feel, no problem. <laughs> if we stop there, or if we, before we stop there, but if we go to the left first rib and have him side bend to the left, we feel that that's limited and he has a hard end feel on his first rib. If we were to stop there and just try and treat that, we might have some success to it, but it's not gonna solve the only problem. Here is where you wanna check the movement of the first rib. So if I palpate and I find where his first rib is, and just so everyone knows, there's a nice write-up in Journal of Manual Manipulative Therapy that showed anatomically, if you go from C1 transverse processes straight down, medial to that is gonna be T1 and transverse processes. If you go lateral to that line, you'll be on the first ribs. This article was written, I can't remember the author, but it was written maybe three years ago or so. But as we palpate along where the first ribs are, posteriorly here, and then I'm using my index fingers on the anterior aspect just underneath the clavicle, I'm gonna drop down so you guys can see. <laughs> but I'm here, and if we ask the patient to keep his shoulders and his back relaxed, but to take a nice, long, slow, deep breath in. What we palpate is an actual posterior rotation movement of the first rib as he breathes in, and the anterior rotation movement of the first rib as he breathes out. So a deep breath in again, and you guys might be able to see that, can't tell. But his rib does have that, that motion like this. So if it was a truly subluxated first rib, you wouldn't see any of this rotation movement at all. You would just see more of a, a bucket handle movement where it comes up like this because it's off an axis. So I already know that, okay, well maybe it's being held up by the scalenes and you could manipulate it and reduce the tone of the scalenes, but it's really not getting to the root cause. In this case, if we go down to that same line and we go on the transverse processes of T1, I can check that's a, that ability to side bend, spring, spring in field. Then I can go on to the left side. It's already elevated compared to the right. This is the transverse process of T1. And then when I check that, hard, hard in field. So I know that that is more likely the problem than the first rib because the first rib had its normal movement. So then from here, I can go in and we can do a number of things. We could either do a supine manipulation at T12. We could get here and do a different uh, mobilization or manipulation while we're here and sitting, rest his arm up here and, and do something like this. Or I can get him in supine and do mobilization or manipulation at T12 to improve that left side bending. But either way, that's what I'm gonna target versus his first rib. Now I could go back and then work on tone or other soft tissue dysfunctions of his scalenes if that's been a long-standing problem. But that's not going to be my first area of treatment normally. So hope that helps maybe tease out the difference between a real actual first rib dysfunction versus something that's more T12 related and be a little bit faster in the clinic and uh, not get hung up on first ribs being elevated when in reality it could be more of the T12 lacking a side bending problem. Hope that helps. Check that out in the clinic. Let me know what you guys think, if it's something you're seeing too, or if you see something different. I'd love to find out.